Welcome to the third Pimera project video. In this one, I will show the current state of the Pimera code and talk about what I'll cover in future videos. I'm going to go over the make file, briefly talk about package requirements that you'll need when you, if you want to build and run the code. And I'll show you the code and you'll be able to find it at this GitHub repo. In future videos, I'll do the teaser now, um, I want to build out motion detection. I may do some live coding for this. just depends on how tricky or time-consuming the problems are to solve. I don't want to bore people while I'm thinking through how to structure loops and, and iterating uh, to something that's uh, clear and optimal. So I may spare you some of those painful details. But basically what we'll be doing, what the logic does, is it compares the current frame to the previously considered frame and uh, will it'll increment a changed pixel counter if the pixels are above a threshold usually that you know 25 we're dealing with grayscale data so I don't have to consider multiple colors it's grayscaled frames later regarding motion detection I have an idea for a optimization um, uh, as a as a way to more efficiently handle the region exclusion logic. Basically, if you want to exclude the top half of a frame, you don't want to have a loop that checks all those, but then says, hey, they're in the skip list, let's skip. We So instead, I think I'm going to try to pre-calculate all the lines or regions of pixels that I need to um, consider within the motion detection algorithm. Um, that way I don't have to loop over stuff that's unnecessary. So. Basically, pre-calculate the pixel lines. Essentially, it would be like an array of pointer offsets, that sort of thing. So I'm thinking I'll try that. Uh, that may be a subject of one or multiple videos. And also, I need to port over my simple HTTP server for MJPEG streaming to the browser. I've got some C code for that already uh, from like a previous interim version of this project. So I could just copy it over and make it fit within my current threading threading setup. And then a big important piece for later is to use the video for Linux device uh, that attaches to the hardware encoder that's present on Raspberry Pis. Luckily, the Lib Camera Apps repository has code we can look at to do that. All right, on to the code. First, I want to pull up the make file. Okay, actually, I need to increase the size. Sorry about that. Okay, there's two make targets here. The first is the default Pimera build. Um, oh, here's what you'll need to install. And actually, I believe, uh, what was the lib? Here we go, this one. So that actually is the full list for the current setup is to install Clang, libcamera dev, and libjpeg turbo dev 6.2. I believe that's the version. So we're using that here. I'm just using it right now to test JPEG compression. Uh, so this is how I'm building with Clang++. plus plus. Um, outputting to that, Pimera ex executable, linking to the libcamera library, Finding headers there, uh, let's see, or sorry, finding include headers there, linking to lib camera, camera base, JPEG library, and the POSIX threads library. All right, on to the C++. Some simple or standard C++ includes, including the lib camera API, threading, I forget what this one is. This is libjpeg. This is stuff that you've seen in the scaffold walkthrough video that I went over. I'm going to try to go fast here because my previous version of this video was about 20 minutes. So this is a uh, map of a frame buffer to a list of memory spans. This ends up being uh, a way to get into the memory space for each plane and in this case, my frame data is YUV, so there's three planes, one for the Y, U, and V plane. 
or one, uh, sorry, one span for each. Uh, let's see, got some threading things right now. I just have a processing thread, and I'm controlling that with uh, mutex, and then a condition that we can that can be used to signal the thread that there's work to be done. I'll skip this for now. This is just for testing. This will ultimately be something like this will be a flag. So we can um, be in, used in signal handling and doing graceful shutdowns or graceful hangups to reload the config file settings. Hard coding dimensions for now and the frame rate. We've got a structure that will grow to store the settings that we currently um, using to configure the camera. Stride is important. I'll talk about that in a bit. I'm going to skip the processing thread function for now and the frame callback and talk about main first. Building out the setting struct here, building up the threading here, attaching it to the processing thread function. Let's see. This is all scaffolding stuff, you know, camera manager, set the camera, acquire it, setting the pixel format to YUV 420. This allows us to skip a step, uh, the RGB to YUV conversion part of the JPEG compression algorithm. So this, this allows us, one, to save on bandwidth coming from the camera, because YUV 420 is, takes up less space than RGB 888. Um, so it saves on bandwidth from the camera and also allows us to skip a step in the JPEG compression, which should be helpful. Here's how you configure the, again, this is scaffolding stuff, so configuring dimensions, the buffers. Let's see, uh, here's the stride. So once we validate the config, the stride may change based on our width, height, and um, capabilities of the camera. So the, the libcamera um, library, when built for the Raspberry Pi, it knows what the camera modules are capable of, and it knows what internal buffers are used for different um, camera modes and resolutions. So the stride may end up being larger than our pixel width of the frame. So if we configure it for 1920 wide, the stride may be 2000 based on you know, how it reads data from the camera sensor. So that's something that we'll need to consider when we do uh, motion detection region exclusion, conversion to JPEG, and conversion to video. So if the stride, like if each line of pixels is actually 2000 wide, but we only care about the 1920, we need to exclude those extra pixels that we don't care about. All right, this is all scaffolding stuff. Configuring the stream, creating the request, adding the buffers in, getting an M map into the allocated buffer uh, file descriptors. This is like DMA buff up here. Like when the buffers are created, it makes uh, DMA buffers, which is a file descriptor. We're making a memory map into that buffer. There's usually one DMA buff per actual buffer object. And that same buffer serves all three planes, each YUV plane. So we're just mapping those. Again, that was the global. So this ends up being a map of the frame buffer to a list of spans. And each span corresponds to a region, uh, one region per each frame, or one region per each plane. All right, we add the buffer to the request. Configure the camera frame rate, which I already talked about in the previous video. This is, this is just me testing it running for a long amount of time. And then when it's done, we shut down the threads, wait for them to stop, and then uh, gracefully shut down the camera. Okay, let's talk about the callback function. Okay, so you saw this in the scaffolding video. Basically, I just print out the number of frames I've seen since the previous second. Here is where I will get a lock around the processing queue 
and push the request onto the queue for processing, signal to the processing thread that we have data, unlock the mutex. Up here, this thread sets up libjpeg stuff. <clears throat> I'll mention these first. So there's going to be pointers to uh, into a memory location, a pointer to the start of the Y data, a pointer to the start of the U data, and the V data. That will point into those memory mapped uh, spans that we talked about earlier. <clears throat> this is all used for libjpeg. I'll skip this, talking about all this stuff. You can find examples of how to use libjpeg on Stack Overflow. This will be used when we start working on motion detection code. We're going to store pixel values for the previous frame that we had seen so we can compare. Let's just talk about this. This is incremented for every frame that we process off the queue. This is the delta, like how many frames do we wait until we try the motion detection algorithm again. In this case, we're doing it three times a second. So if FPS is 30, this would be a value of 10. So we wait 10 frames between runs of the motion detection algorithm. And I'm using this threshold here, which is compare, will be compared against the frame counter. So to start with, the threshold ends up being 10. So once frame counter hits 10, we'll run motion detection. All right, so here's our loop that just keeps processing items off the queue. This is standard mutex wait condition logic. We get a lock on the mutex. Uh, while the, there's nothing in the queue, we're going to wait on the condition variable. And once the condition, once the condition variable is flipped, it will exit this loop and pull off an item from the queue and then release the lock. I won't talk about this right now. All right, here's where the frame counter is incremented when we pull off a request. Here's stuff I'll ignore regarding MJPEG streaming. Um, but right now, the only logic I have in here is the JPEG conversion stuff. And this will always be true for my debugging purposes. And here's the comparison of the frame counter and the MJPEG threshold. I know I talked about the motion detection threshold, but there's similar logic for this. So once the frame counter gets above... You know, on the first iteration, frame counter hits 10 or so. It will be greater than this threshold. And then we'll bump the threshold out again based on the delta to wait. And, you know, so the loop comes around and we trigger it after the next batch of frames. I'm rambling a bit, but here's the pointers into the mapped buffers. And these again map a frame buffer object and a vector of plane spans. So this ends up being a pointer location into the memory map region. So one for each YUV, get some size, get some other pointers that are used in the JPEG. This here, if you look at this GitHub issue, I had to move, uh, they recommended that I move this to here and reset this on every iteration because otherwise this buffer keeps getting uh, reallocated at larger sizes so it keeps growing and eventually it out of memory my process on the Raspberry Pi. So putting it here and then there's a corresponding free right there to free that buffer that was allocated by the JPEG library. Now I don't have out of memory or you know eternally growing buffer issues. My compression let's see I'm doing some timing too and uh, compression you takes up to 130 milliseconds. So I may end up um, doing smaller frames for JPEG streaming. So instead of 1920 by 1080, I may request 800 by 600 from the camera. In addition to the full size YUV data, I may request a smaller size just for JPEG streaming. So that way we can compress more quickly and have more frames in the live stream, but that's to be determined. So this is all standard for libjpeg setup as well. Um, pointing, you know, making a, an array of rows to pointers into the YUV uh, memory space. This is how we skip the RGB to YUV conversion. 
I already have YUV data, so I'm, I'm telling libjpg, hey, I have raw data that I want you to operate on instead of the normal one, scan lines, which expects RGB data. All right, so setting that up, telling it to finish compression, getting the time, saving to a file, freeing the buffer. And that's basically it. And then we tell that request we want to reuse it, and we want it to reuse the buffers, the same buffers that were attached to it, and then requeue it so the camera can send us more frames. This is the end of the queue processing loop here. And then once that loop ends, if you know we need to shut down the app, we destroy the JPEG uh, structure. Okay, that's the the basics. Um, like I said, next time I actually hope to talk, like start going through building out motion detection, uh, and. We'll see how far we get. Alrighty. Thanks for watching.